Hello viewers, subscribers and fellow RC pilots, Stuart here at Stuart Warren RC. Now I join you in the midst of this corona pandemic, it's very very serious. I myself have been really quite ill, fever of over 39 degrees, I've been in bed for four or five days. Uh, more seriously, my daughter got, uh, got the similar fever, she had the same temperature. We're through that now, I'm still a little bit under the weather, but I implore you to please stay inside as much as possible. Um, we will get through this absolutely, be got to stay safe. Have been you making use of this time indoors, as I'm sure many of you have. Been getting on with the Yak AT, and that's what this update is all about. Um, somewhat frustrating, I've been waiting for the weather to go uh, to turn and get better. It has now got better, although it's still a little bit cold as you can see, and windy now. Because I've got reviews that I want to show you. I've got, uh, would you believe it, a Motion RC review of the T33. I've actually got some uh, Hobby King models that um, uh, I want to review. Um, for example, just the other day, the V2 Tundra uh, released. I've got one of those on its way to me because I'm very interested to see what's happened there. Also, uh, Multiplex models. I've got a Multiplex Fun Ray. I've done a bit of a flight review for that already. Might get that out to you whilst I'm waiting uh, for the green light from the government to be able to go out and do the rest of it. And um, FMS reviews. We've got a few more FMS models, the, uh, the New Pits and the Avanti uh, to review. But... I was waiting for good weather, that weather did come, but now of course we're stuck inside. I myself have got to be inside my own physical premises for two weeks now that I've been ill according to the Dutch government. But we will get through this, absolutely, we will get through this. So in the meantime, making use of things, uh, of my time inside, and uh, well, specifically, the Yak-18. Now let's go into some of the details of the Yak-18. Here it is, in this state it's pretty much done i've just got to now finish uh, uh, installing the um speed controller and the servo uh, sorry and the receiver and um just a little bit of uh, electronic work on that but it came up really really good i've got the best light here in my back garden this time of day but you can see okay it's it's ugly but it's definitely got some brutish charm to it um not sure it's still my cup of tea, but I'm very, very pleased with the way it turned out. Now, I want to talk you through some of the things that I did, first of all, to, to get this project uh, off the ground, as it were. Hopefully, you can see me here. Now, what did I start with? Oh, well, first of all, I started with a lot of cleaning. It needed a lot of work. It took me a full evening to clean this. Uh, I used a combination of acetone, of uh, degreaser cleaning fluid, and um, of, lots, of lots of wet wipes. And I've uh, got a little bit of footage to show you now of uh, how that process went. Just so you can see how much um, elbow grease is needed to, uh, to get this model clean. It took maybe about an hour and a half, two hours, but the fuselage is looking much better now. Nice and clean. Obviously you can really see the wrinkles now. So I've got to go over that with the covering iron or the heat gun. I'm going to get it outside in the uh, good natural light if we ever get some nice sunshine in these parts and uh, work on the wing next. But yeah, that was a busy night, but much success. Now that was the fuselage that you saw me working on there and then I went on to do the wings. Now before I did the wings though, I wanted to make the covering on it that much more tighter um, so when I scrubbed it, I could really scrub it well. So um, for that I used two things, covering iron, a must have in anybody's workshop, especially with these types of models, and then also a heat gun, very much a must have too. And here again is a little bit of uh, footage of me describing the process that I went through uh, at that stage of this restoration. Okay, I'm going to try a little something here. I have, it's all that everybody should have when you've got a model, a heat gun. Now, um, this has got two settings, high and low. Now, hopefully what you can see, see that bubbling there? This is typical on anything that's covered. You see it there. Now, a good tip is to go around the um, edges of the covering, the covering iron, such, like, such as this first just to seal down those edges because when you apply the heat of the heat gun it's going to pull that torque and you'll lift the edges if you don't but i'm just going to give you a quick uh, visual demonstration of how well the heat gun works there you go. medium setting now and look at this see them disappearing let's find another one watch this see wrinkles appear and then they disappear wrinkles appear 
and then they disappear. Lovely. Now I'm going to go around this properly in a second when I'm not holding the camera. There you go. And then what you do, you just let that cool and then it becomes like this. This one's already been done and it is drummed tight. Now that it is tight, I'm going to go ahead and clean it because I've got that much more tension on the surface. So I should be able to scrub that much harder. But if you saw those bubbles that were there, they've now gone. That's the wonders of the heat gun. So that was the cleaning process. And again, as you can see, I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. Um, I managed to get rid of all the really big marks. I scrubbed a little bit hard in some places with the acetone, lifted a little bit of the cover, but it got most of the dirt off. And I think you'll agree, it now looks much, much better for it. Really, really pleased with how this turns out, actually. It's not even bright at the back of my garden, but you can see that it's looking really, really nice. Uh, the covering, considering its age, uh, held up very, very well. Of course, the next thing to do, or the next thing I had to do on that was uh, turn my attention to the firewall. The firewall was full of holes and needed some work. And again, I've got some footage just explaining what I did to get that firewall uh, up to a, uh, a good standard. Okay, so we have got the firewall filled and uh, I've started taking to it with a sander now. Uh, filled it with ply here and actually a broom handle there on those holes and put some epoxy in there. Now I want to sand it flat so I can then put a, uh, a new face on it as it were before mounting the, uh, the motor, the electric motor. So let's do that. It's getting there. Got uh, quite a bit more sanding to do. You don't need to watch that. Come back later when this is done. Okay, that's pretty much got it nice and smooth now. It doesn't look very pretty, so I'm gonna face it now, but hey. 16 euro sander from the uh, discount store, pretty good. Kids are screaming, gotta go. So with the firewall done uh, and nice and level and smooth and finished, it was then of course turn, time to mount the motor. Now the motor I've got in this is an SK3 uh, 5035 or 5055, around 400 kV. It's a 6S setup, really good set up, set up for this size model. And uh, here is some footage of what I did to mount the, uh, the motor in this one. Okay, so here's a little update for you. I've got uh, the motor mounted on this block of wood. Well, first of all, actually, right, there we go. That's the firewall now, all completely filled, and I faced it with a little bit of thin light ply. I've got the center line on there, drawn on there, but what I need to define is where the, um, the side thrust, uh, or the side center line is, if you like, because I want this motor to align nicely with the cow. So I've drawn the line on the top. I've got a block of balsa uh, that I've cut to uh, the right length. It, uh, the I want the, uh, the prop bus to come just uh, clear of the cow. Um, and basically what I need is just to do a, a standoff of 65 uh, millimeters. That's what that block represents. But I'm just trying to set the, the, uh, the center line uh, for the side anyway. So I've got that mocked up there in the center. And I think at the back too. And the idea is now that's gonna get the cow and pop that over and the idea is now once I screw it on I'll be able to uh, set the the position for the motor all right on with it and then I'll remove those blocks and put some standoffs in okay so the motor is now mounted there are the standoffs it's the wall filled and so that's that. And also redone the hatch. That is now magnetic. See that I've now got a better battery tray in there. That's the new battery tray. 5006S. Like 
uh, so we have the motor mounted and here it is you can see here really nice clearance this is a APC 16.8 this is pretty much the exact same setup I've got in my Savex Spitfire just a note on that I'm getting uh, with the all up weight I forget what the actual weight is now but my power to weight ratio on this is around 120 watts per pound which is an ideal number for uh, sports aerobatic flying so I'm really really looking forward to that once we're finally able to get out and fly this thing uh, then the finishing touches on that uh, on the model itself it was then time for spraying really really enjoy spraying um, models and I especially enjoy good masking uh, a tip that you can see me using here I used blender um, tape and you actually put it on your trousers for a bit to make it take away some of the uh, tackiness then you apply it and then it peels off really really nicely as you can see in the footage it's playing over and gives a really really good finish once I had done that I then moved on to the canopy area the pilot got a uh, extra lick of paint on his hair because he was quite bald by the end of it uh, and I installed a new cockpit floor and then the canopy itself this is actually just uh, electrical tape trimmed down a bit and then applied with a covering iron and that is now really really solid so um, maybe it could have been cream that would have been nice but it was white originally so that finish hasn't turned out too bad at all and then the final thing uh, well just before I'm at the stage that I'm at now was the uh, retracts now I've got the e-flight uh, 60 to 120 size retracts in this one uh, it's the same that I actually brought them out of my Savic Spitfire but the retracts themselves work very very well just put this up on this nose get a little view underneath there you can see so we'll have some footage of these going but they tuck up into their into the wells the installation was very straightforward actually it's pretty much drop-in replacement of the old retracts and the other thing of interest is the flap that is now fully operational uh, I think that will work very well I've never used a, uh, a center mounted flap like this a single center mounted flap but I'm looking forward to trying that when we're eventually able to get out and fly so that was the update now for this part two of the SIG uh, Yak 18 I uh, hope you guys learned something from this maybe um, certainly I enjoyed this it was a, was a very quick one like I said at the very beginning there wasn't much to do with this model um, and there's not much to do now just a uh, find a little bit of electronic installation then it's good to go and it's a good sizable model too I think it's around 72 inch and it's definitely got a nice scheme so this may be a keeper we will see and then after this who knows we'll see what other projects I want to get onto next maybe the um, SIG third scale spacewalker definitely we're, we're going to be inside for a little while longer yet but we'll see so that was that update um, maybe I'll bring you some engine updates as well I've got a few that I want to start cleaning I've got some other models that I can start restoring you will see still keep hearing from me from the channel there's still lots to uh, explore so thank you very much for watching please like if you liked if you didn't that's fine uh, subscribe also that's also appreciated and uh, leave your comments I always like to read those comments and respond to those comments and if you've got any questions about anything that I've done in this that maybe I didn't cover in this video please just ask away that's what the um, the boxes underneath the videos are there for so I look forward to those comments thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time